<laughs> niggas fessed up, all kinds of guns on him, running behind this nigga in meeting. He got to go to the studio, we heal. So y'all was guns, holding, them holding them down, like damn, really like, holding them down. Like, opening doors, like this nigga was a fucking boss for real, man. Say that again? Like we was holding this nigga down like he was a boss yeah. for real, man. Yeah, like, sound like, we was, like he was a boss. Opening <laughs> doors, pistols, yeah. all that. Like, we, we was the security. You know so let I mean? me ask you a question. All that music shit, I wasn't with that rapping shit. <laughs> that nigga crazy. Like, I was slinging crack and dope for real. Uh huh. You know what I mean? When 50 stopped slinging, the block became mine. So like, okay, so I 50 don't even, had the block on yeah. lock for a minute? Yeah, yeah, that shit on the man. The whole hood was pumping for 50. Oh, for real? The whole motherfucking hood. I don't go fuck you. Slung cracking 9495, he was pumping for 50. Wow. Yeah, he had the whole block pumping for like, after 50 did what he did, like, 50 ain't back down. 50 was banging out in the shit. I know 50 was whooping them niggas' ass, because 50 is a big boxing ass motherfucker. <laughs> so I know he was tearing some And these niggas, it was like 8, 11 of these niggas, you know what yeah. I mean? Chris Gotti left his Nikes in there size 11. I'll tell you about that. He ran out without his sneaker size 11. But them niggas ain't do nothing crazy. They talk about, yeah, we turned the lights off and all that shit. These niggas backed in the light, but... Anyway, my nigga ain't snitch, my nigga ain't tell. Okay. I tell you who told that that engineer nigga, mm -hmm. that DJ nigga, that fat nigga from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. he got poked in his chest. That's who tried to sue, you know what I mean? Okay. 50 year old yeah, yo, ain't none of them had nothing to do with that. My niggas ain't no rats. I wouldn't even run with rats to begin with. Now yeah, yo. He uh Yeah yo my nigga, shot out. out of free Tony Yeah yo. Free Tony Yeah yo. Cause see he was a part of this start of this shit too. You know what? I really used to look up to 50. I, I keep it real this nigga from the same hood. I watch that nigga do his thing in the hood, knock niggas the fuck out, get money. So I ran that block. That whole block was his. Niggas used to hustle for son. Everybody used to get money for that nigga. Oh, okay then. I'll say but son was always a big ass nigga. I'll be a big boxing nigga. Right. So he used to fuck <laughs> niggas up in the hood. This gun game wasn't crazy, but he used to whoop niggas ass, break niggas' jaws, do all of that. What's going on with um, Tony? What's up with Yale, man? Yeah, yo, yeah, yo, my nigga. Is yeah, he yo. out or you nah, still there? Yeah, yo, in the pen. Yeah, yo, in the pen. Cause me and son started this like. He put me in. You know what He's saying? from this one right here. Yeah, hey, yeah, all of us, man. all of us. Yeah, yo, I got money with Yale. We smoke crack yeah. together. I remember when I was fucked up there. I know some pieces here. When he was uh, fucked up, smoke from your son here. It was like that, man. Yeah, uh, we grind. 50 Cent's life has become one of legend. Because once niggas know your background and you really do half of the things you rap about, because half of these rappers is lying. See, like in New York, he was already popular because he was a hustler, but when he started rapping, they embraced him even more. I think 50 is as authentic as they come. He's a bona fide street gangster. 95% of these rappers is liars, know what I mean? So once people know your background and they believe you, that's when they embrace you, you know what I mean? People get shot one time and die though, you know, like, so you hit nine times, you like, count. damn. It's like a whole movie with him. He was one of the biggest, youngest drug dealers at that time. From 94, 95, he was one of the biggest, youngest drug dealers. At that time, he was like 19. Ultimately, it is a tale of triumph over adversity. He was out here with us. So it's like when you see somebody out here with you every day, when you see it for yourself firsthand, then you know what I'm saying? In a way, it's like it's, it inspires you. He's authentic to people. The stuff he's talking about that's coming out of his mouth, his struggle, his pain, is authentic. At 12 years old, Curtis was arrested for the first time for unlawful possession of a firearm and crack cocaine. It would become the first of many convictions. In high school, he was like in the ninth grade, and he got caught through the metal detectors. But he was young, so they suspended him from school, and they had to release him. So, you know, once you're a certain age, you can't go to jail. Got caught with cracks in the school. So he was really doing that, man. Like, 50 been boxing since he was, like, 13. That's why he had advantage on everybody in the hood, because he was always a bigger dude, and he could fight. Like, yeah, he broke a lot of people's jaws in the hood, too. I ain't going to lie, sit up here, talk bad about him. He did that. Know what I mean? He, he still boxed to this day. And he would punch the shit out you. Like I said, he would knock you out. Like, hand to hand, you wasn't, you wasn't going to see him. He, he can fight. By the time he was 19, Curtis was making $5,000 a day from selling crack and heroin and drove both a Land Cruiser and a luxury Mercedes-Benz 400 SE. And, that's, and he had a Benz, you feel me? He had a Benz. Before this rap shit, he had a Benz, man. He was getting paid for, man. You feel me? And we used to sit on the block and talk, man. You know what I'm saying? But 
Hey, he did it. You can tell, man, you 19 and you got a Benz, a, four, a SC 400. You that nigga, hell yeah, you successful. He was calm most of the time because he was like one of those dudes that you, you ain't know what he was going to do. You know what I'm saying? He could be talking to you one minute and you don't know you got a problem and you got a problem with him. You know what I'm saying? In the summer of 1994, he was arrested twice in three weeks. But when he got locked up and came home, he was like, yo, I got to do something, man. I'm just tired of going to jail back and forth, selling drugs or whatever. So that's when he stayed focused and he started doing the music thing. And he had just had his son, Kesey, too. So he was like, yo, I'm going to do this, start this music shit. Because his son had came involved, so that's what really kept him focused on the music. 50 was always the man for, like, getting money. That's how he met Jam Master J. Like, Jam Master J thought he was a basketball player. Because he pulled up at the club, 50 had the 400 bench. So he couldn't get in the club. So Jam Master J remembered him, like, yo, you such and such, right? Like a basketball player. 50 was like, yeah. So he got in the club with Jam Master J. Because the way 50 changed the game is, he didn't just spit a rhyme on a mixtape. He created songs. Oh, it all stepped for, for a long time ago, like a close friend of 50 Rob Ja. Then Ja seen 50 with him. So 50, you know, he rapping now at the time, so he tried to tell Ja what up. So Ja was looking at him, and 50 had his hand out. So 50 pulled his hand back and was like, yeah, whatever. And I mean, that's how the whole, that happened in the club. So ever since then, 50 seen him again in Atlanta. And that's when they had a fight. 50 punched him in the eye and took his chain. Yeah. I got love for homie. I don't care what interview I got. I ain't never gonna come out and just badmouth him. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna speak my piece always, but I ain't gonna sit up here and badmouth nobody. But I'll let you know the truth, though.